What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. My name's Jordan Kinnigy, and today we're gonna to talk about how to catch, clean, and then cook a trout. So it's gonna be very basic. I'm gonna teach a lot of you people out there that might have never done this before, that I really recommend you do go try this great sport of fishing. I'm gonna show you three easy ways to catch fish, and then I'm gonna show you the whole process and what to do after the fact. So if you guys wanna learn more about this fun sport, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So like I said, I'm gonna show you guys three different methods that work really well for going out and targeting any sort of stock trout in a lake, pond, river, anywhere in the world that you're fishing for trout, all three of these methods will work great. The first one I'm gonna show you is the spinner setup. And that's probably the easiest, most basic, quickest way to get out there and go fishing. It doesn't take a lot of setup, it doesn't take a lot of rigging. And just so you know that each single one of these methods I'm gonna show you guys right now, we have in-depth tutorials on, in the links in the description on our page, Addicted Fishing, that will show you start to finish everything you need to know about how to use these methods. I'm gonna show you quickly, but I'm gonna get through each one of them and then we're gonna start fishing so we can catch one for you guys. So the spinner setup is very easy. Each rod that I'm gonna be using for this kind of fishing is a two to six pound ultralight rod. I like to use the ultralights for trout fishing because one, they cast the light gear really well and two it's a lot of fun to fight a smaller fish on this light rod so this is seven and a half feet this is two to six pounds and I have a 20 pound indicted enforcer line on my two or three thousand series reel a lot of different companies I like Okumas Okumas are some of my favorite rods a lot of different companies make these things, but a two to a 3,000 reel is the perfect setup for this because that means the size of that reel. It's not too big, it's not too small. You can put just the amount of line on it that you want. And having that 20 pound addictive enforcer braid works really nice, one, because you can see it really well, and two, it casts really, really nicely when you're throwing light lures like we use for trout. So what I have on the end of this is I've actually connected a bumper onto here. And you guys can do this. There's more, again, knot tutorials on our page here at Addicted Fishing that'll show you how to tie these bumper knots or these uni knots. But for you beginners who are just learning how to tie a normal, regular fisherman's knot, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated for you. But I've connected this with a blood knot. You can put a little swivel in between here, but I like to add a piece of line, a fluorocarbon, or a, a monofilament line to the end of the braid so that you don't scare the fish away with that high-vis line. So I have about five to six feet of line. Uh, this is a fluorocarbon, this is 12 pound test that I've added. I got about six total feet right down to my spinner. And having a good variety of spinners is very important. As you see, I have just a yellow Vibrax style spinner. This is a blue fox, but I have a whole box full of stuff here that works just as well. I have things that we call cast masters. Again, we have a lot of tutorials on that. We have spoons, little Cleos. We have Panther Martins. We have rooster tails, and we have some different, different brands. We have some Meps. We have some Brad's wiggle warts and stuff. But having a good, good box of hardware can be very important. You don't have to go spend hundreds of dollars, but make sure you get a couple of different colors and a couple of different sizes and styles of those spinners, and that'll definitely help you catch more fish. Setup number two that I'm gonna show you is another very, very basic setup that it's very easy for all you out there to use. That's the nice part about all three of these setups that I'm showing you is they're very easy. They only take a couple knots and a couple pieces of tackle to actually get to fishing. What I have here is an addicted fix float system. I have the same two to six pound ultralight rod, 2000, 3000 series reel, and then I have a fixed float system on here. And this is a fixed float system we make with Mustad. This is an addicted fix float. This is of the trout variety. You guys can find these in stores and on our website soon at addicted.fishing but these ones actually aren't quite available yet, but there are steelhead size fixed floats that are available all over the US and on Mustad's website. So the way this fixed float system works is these little rubber grommets slide up my line. I have two of them here. I take my line and I slide it right through that hole that's created on the side of the bobber, which is very convenient because if these things fall off, your bobber doesn't. What I'm gonna do here, now that that thing's sliding freely up and down my line, I'm gonna give it a little bit of moisture on the top and I'm gonna slide that top grommet on there. You don't have to fully fix it onto that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I'm gonna get a little wet so it goes on there easy. And I'm gonna slide that thing about halfway on there. And that's gonna regulate our depth. And that's how you adjust your depth up and down. That's why we call it a fixed float. It's fixed to your line. So I have that fixed float that goes up and down. I can adjust my depth. I've added a couple number seven split shots in there. And all I did was take these things. Let me try to peel one off here. All I did was take these little weights, and this is just to add weight to get my bait down, or whatever I'm using. I take that little split shot, I pinch it onto my line. You can either use your pliers, or I'm a bad guy, sorry mom. Pinch that down a little bit with your teeth, and you're ready to go. What I've gone from here, after I've added those couple of weights, is I've used a little barrel swivel. And this is what I like to do in between my bait or my, my lure or whatever I have down below that fixed float. I add a little tiny barrel swivel here. And that's to create that separation from your heavier line 
like a 12 pound line because this one also has that 12 pound bumper and allows you to put a lighter leader on down below that. And you can either tie a normal hook on there, a bait hook, you can put power bait on there. I have a few different options I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. Or you can use things like this, our little addicted micro worms, which float right underneath that bobber. Usually I like to use these in a little bit more moving water situations where if you're fishing a river or a creek or something like that, these worms work a lot better with some sort of moving current. But these are addicted micro worms, a great option to fish under those fixed floats. And there's also, again, in-depth tutorials on here that show you guys exactly how to use these. But just for an option, you can see what we have here. But I'm gonna tie that lighter line. I have an eight pound test. I'm gonna tie that to the bottom of this little swivel here. Just a normal fisherman's knot. Okay. And then I have my weights. Once again, I have my little weights under my fixed float. My fixed float goes up and down in depth. I have my leader down to my micro worm or I have any kind of bait. You can tie just a normal bait hook on here, which I'm gonna show you more about adding bait onto your line in the next little step here when I show you this next method. But you can use anything like this underneath that using some sort of power bait, some sort of night crawlers, some sort of little trout eggs. Any single thing will work underneath that. And that's a great way to be fishing at a certain depth in that water column where those fish are swimming around and searching for some food. I'm not gonna use this one today right away because it's pretty windy out here. So I'm gonna actually show you the next method and that's the one I'm gonna stick with here today and that is fishing bait off of the bottom here. So let's get that setup going. So the next method is probably the easiest one of all that I'm gonna show you, and that is fishing power bait off of the bottom. For most of you beginners out there, if you're gonna go out there and start casting around, I would recommend either one, starting with some power bait off the bottom, and then while that's sitting in there, just like I'm gonna do here, if you're allowed to fish two rods in that area, I'm gonna be fishing one sitting there, fishing power bait, and then I'm gonna be casting my spinner alongside of it, which I'm gonna do here in just a second for you guys. So. Easiest setup that there is, though, honestly. I'm gonna take my line, my main line, same rod setup, same, same line weight, everything. I'm gonna tie that straight to a barrel swivel. And that's how this thing starts. I'm gonna go just like this. Pull that thing tight, and there we go. We have the first step. Then I'm gonna take some eight pound test. Any brand works, we really like tough line. Then I'm gonna take about a two to a three foot leader and the length of that leader depends on how much foliage is on the bottom of the lake or the canal or the river that you're fishing. I want this stuff to float up and above any sort of grass or moss that's on the bottom of the lake. So I'm gonna make sure to have that at least two to three feet long usually. That way you can make sure that you're in the zone. Then I'm gonna tie that right to the other end of my barrel swivel that I tied to my main line here. This one I'm gonna leave a little bit longer tag end and this is just a typical fisherman's knot. I'm doing seven wraps around. Go back through the eye that you created of your line. Th pull that tag in through. Give it a little moisture so it doesn't get too frayed and hot. And there we go. So that at the end of my leader now, I'm gonna take just a normal hook. And this is why this is so darn easy. I'm gonna take a normal bait hook. These are made by Mustad also. And I'm just gonna do once again, the same, same knot that I did on my other two. Just a normal fisherman's knot right to that hook and we're ready to fish. So the way we're gonna get this down, I'm gonna bait that in just a second for you guys so you can see how we do that. But the way we're gonna get this down is with some split shots here. And I'm gonna do this a little bit of a cheater way. And this is, this is kind of a cool method that I like to use. That's why I left these tag ends on here. You can either add an inline weight that slides back and forth on your line here. But today, because it's not very snaggy, there's no current, I'm actually gonna just let this stuff sit on the bottom and I'm not gonna worry about having a slide weight. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this tag end that I created from my leader line and I'm gonna put that, bear, that little split shot right on that. And the nice part about this is if you do get snagged and you start pulling against that snag, what's gonna happen is it's actually just gonna pull your lead off of this little piece of line instead of breaking your line in half and causing you to lose your entire setup. So this is a cool little trick that you can use that uh, will save you some time and it'll save you some money in the long run because you won't be losing all your hooks and everything else that you need to stay out there. Just like so. So you see I left that tag in, I added each one of those little split shot and it's gonna be important now, I'm not gonna use my teeth on this one, I'm gonna use my pliers, and I'm gonna pinch each and every one of those down so that they're nice and secure to my line. Okay, there you have it, you guys. Very easy, very fun setup. Works dang good, and it's so quick and easy to get into, and especially this is some of your first time actually fishing, this is gonna be a very easy method to go start with and it's gonna have you fishing in no time. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our power bait, 
gonna go with our rainbow power bait. And this comes in all kinds of different varieties, you guys. We got, we got the little garlic balls. We got all different flavors of, of power bait. A lot of the times you can find these in, in a, lot of, a lot of places all in one pack. They have little four or five packs of this stuff. But power bait works really good. I like a lot of times using the little nuggets or these little guys because one, they don't fall off. And two, when a fish bites them, a lot of times they hold on to them and they don't actually steal your bait. So I'm gonna go with my favorite little garlic balls here. I'm gonna add two of them and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put those on. These things have a really stinky scent to them. I'm not gonna say it's a good scent, but it is stinky and it gets their attention. So I'm gonna go right like this. These things have a nice firm nature to them, so they'll actually stay on your line pretty good. I'm gonna slide it up onto the bar of my hook there, and there we go. Let's go fishing. Okay, now casting this out can be very easy. Very basic method if you guys have never casted a rod before. I like to hold the rod in between my pinky finger and my ring finger right there on the reel seat. I always make sure to have the roller of the bale facing straight up towards my finger so that I don't have to reach far. I'm gonna hold that line with my index finger, open my bale, and I'm ready to cast. So I like to always say it's a four step process. Step one, holding the rod correctly and grabbing that line with that bale pointed straight up. Step two, opening the bale. Step three, identifying your casting range. Make sure there's nothing behind you that's gonna grab your bait. No trees, no people or anything like that. Step four is identifying where you wanna be casting to and casting to that. Your rod is like a gun barrel. So I don't wanna make this thing go too far out there. I've been seeing fish jump all around us here. So I'm not gonna go too far out. I'm gonna go about, I don't know, a quarter of the way across the lake. Then I'm gonna let that thing fall into the water. So as I look across, I identify my target. I point my rod tip right at it. Let that index, index finger go and then let that thing sink. So that's gonna sink all the way to the bottom there. There it is, and we're fishing. So the next step, I'm gonna close that bale, and you need to have a semi-taut line here. That's why I went with this method, because it was, it was really windy out here today, so that you can actually see that line go tight, reel down against it, and leave your bait right there in place the whole time. And it's not gonna take too much effort to be able to tell if you're getting a bite. The next step is either find yourself a nice stick or something, some sort of rod holder to keep that rod in. Once you have your rod in your rod holder set up, you're gonna just slowly reel your line tight, watch your rod tip until it just starts to get bent and get tight because you want that bite to register on that rod tip. If it's too loose and you have too much line out there laying around, you're not gonna be able to see that bite. As you can see here, like if we get a bite, you're gonna see that tip start to move. If we have too much slack line out on the water, you're not gonna be able to see that and it's not gonna register. So now that we have this set, let's get to fishing our spinner. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to fish my spinner. This is a very basic setup. I'm gonna show you just a little bit more of an advanced setup on how to fish the spinner here really quick because it's how I'm gonna fish this spot in particular. We have a fairly deep body of water right here behind us. So that being, I wanna get this spinner down a little bit further. So I'm actually gonna change my spinner up to my favorite one, which is my, my Panther Martin. So I'm gonna do this really quick. And it's gonna be similar to that fishing that setup off of the bottom here. I'm gonna take a barrel swivel. I'm gonna tie that barrel swivel in line and that's what's gonna allow me to add a little bit of split shot to the main line so that I can cast that spinner as far as I want to. Because covering water is the best part about fishing a spinner. You can cast to a lot of different places, you can cast a jumping fish, and you can cover the, the part of the lake counterclockwise or clockwise so that you're not leaving any water unfished. Okay, got that. Now I'm gonna add about a two and a half to a three foot leader off of that. You don't wanna make it too long because it'll be harder to cast. So now that I have my leader tied to the other end of that swivel, I'm gonna add a little bit of weight to the main line side of my actual setup here, of my, of my spinner setup. Give myself a little more room here. Slide my line through, pinch that down. You want these things sitting side by side, so I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna slide my line through, pinch it down. Then I'm gonna use my pliers once again to get that nice and snug, because we don't want those moving around and falling off. Now I'm gonna go into my box here and I'm gonna grab my old trusty Panther Martin, which is one of my very favorites. All of these spinners work really good, but I have a special place in my heart for the old Panther Martin. This one is the black and gold color. There's about 10 or 15 different SKUs that they have of different colors that all work really good to catch fish. I just have the ones that I stick with and that's what I recommend for you guys. Find one that you catch fish on, stick to it and then trust it and take that all over the place and, and catch fish with it. All right, so now we're ready to fish the spinner. So I got my split shots on my line there. I have my barrel swivel. I got about a two and a half to three foot leader down to my Panther Martin here. So let's get to casting. I'm gonna show you the method of fishing this. 
Okay, so I like to cover water with this, like I said before. So what I do is I try to make a little pie chart. I cast either clockwise or I cast counterclockwise, depending on where I'm fishing and what I want to do. But I've been seeing fish jump around the whole time here, so I'm just gonna start covering water. I don't ever wanna just keep making the same cast over and over and over and over again. So I'm gonna cast in one direction, I'm gonna work my way across, and then I'm gonna move down the bank with my feet, trying to cover as many options and, and di directions in the lake as I can, because these trout are swimming around and hunting. They're looking, for, they're looking for food, they're looking for bugs on the surface, they're looking for insects on the bottom, and literally they're just swimming back and forth looking for, looking for a meal for the day. So we wanna try to get in front of them best we can, and the best way to do that is cast casting in a lot of different spots. Oh, just got slammed, come on. I know you want it, come back for it. You guys can see the way I'm fishing this. I'm letting it sink for about a four or five count because I know it's really deep out there. And then I'm just doing a nice steady reel. I can feel the blade kind of creating some tension on my line. And the key is, is a lot of times just to not reel too fast. You want to let that thing slowly work through the zone, make sure that blade is spinning and give those fish an object that it's easy for them to chase down and, and eat uh, ultimately. A lot of times if it's moving too fast, they'll get uninterested. And a lot of times you'll get short bites, just kind of like I got there, where they swim up, smack it, and then swim away because it's going just a little bit too quickly through their zone. All right, so it's been about 15, 20 minutes. I've seen some fish activity around us. They're jumping, they're splashing. We're not getting bit. So that's an instant key. It's the indicator for me to try to switch something up and try something a little bit different. So I'm gonna take these little power eggs off. Honestly, you could even leave them on, but I don't wanna to get too big of a bait going out there. Let's put these back in our pack. Now I'm gonna take some power bait. I'm gonna add that on there. This stuff is pretty easy to use. It's pretty user friendly. Just gonna scoop a little bit out there. I'm gonna smash this into a ball. I could use it like, use like a little football shape in the, in the crest of your little fingers there and I'm just gonna mold it to the back side of that hook you don't necessarily need to hook it straight through it you just need to mold it right in there so that those fish can grab it and it doesn't fly off when you go to cast so there we go our power baits ready grab my line identify where I want to go send her flying and let that sink all the way to the bottom again Okay, and so at the same time, because that didn't work, I'm gonna try a little bit different spinner. I'm gonna go with the rooster tail now. I'm gonna go with a completely different color, a little bit different size. See if these fish are just keened in on something a little bit different here today. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so I got one really good bite on the, on the spinner. Didn't get anything on the rooster tail. Panther Martin obviously outperformed once again. So now I'm gonna grab the trusty old Castmaster. Another really good favorite. One that we have more tutorials on again on our page here. So check them out, it links in the description. We're gonna take that Castmaster, let's tie it on. This is gonna be fished a little bit differently, so I'll show you guys as I, as I go through the methods of fishing this. And hopefully we can get one to grab it so we can have a little lunch with you guys here today. So you can see the difference in how I'm fishing this. I took that swivel and I took that split shot off because these cast masters are actually pretty heavy. So they're easy to cast a long distance by themselves, even if it's windy like this. And they sink really well too, so they get down to the bottom quick. But the way I'm gonna fish this is like midway in between just that straight reel in that I'm doing and, and some sort of a jig. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift my tip about two to three feet after every single time that I reel in so that that thing gets that nice little flutter. And a lot of times as it falls in between that lift and that reel, that's when those fish are gonna grab it. So you're kind of keying in on a totally different feeding tactic for those fish. You're giving them just something totally different to look at here. So I'm gonna let that sink a little bit. Oh, I got hit on the fall. It got hit on the fall. Come on, come back for it. As you can see there, as that thing was falling down into the strike zone, it just got slammed. And for some reason, the fish gods hate me right now and they're not letting that fish stay on there. 
Second time that's happened so far. Dang it, dang it. At least we know where they're at over there. Let's get it back over there again. He's on there guys, he's on there, I got him. I got him. Sweet. So the thing is, you really wanna make sure that that bite continues and finishes. That can be the biggest mistake a lot of people make when they're doing this kind of fishing, is that when that fish starts to bite, they get a little negligent, they get a little too excited, and they, cut, they jerk on it too early, and that fish never gets a chance to actually eat that bait. Where this time, as you can see, the hook is completely down that fish's stomach. Yes, everyone, we got him. We got him. Both methods have worked so far. One's better than the other. Woo! Both of them have been getting hit and getting eaten, but a lot of times it's just that waiting game. It's that time, it's that patience, and it's letting that fish come to you in a situation like this where there's a lot of fish around you. We just gotta be here so that they can swim up to us and eat our stuff. Let's get him in here. Let's get him in here. Beautiful. Now you see by how letting him eat it, he took that thing all the way down his throat and he wasn't going anywhere. And there it is, everybody. There's our trout. Heck yeah. So what I like to do here, a lot of people like to put these things on a stringer. A lot of people like to do different things that keep them alive for a long time, but I don't like that. I don't think it's humane. So I'm gonna take a rock here. I'm gonna give him a little bonk right on the head. Make sure that quick and humanely he gets knocked out. And now we're ready to go. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bleed this fish. And why I'm gonna do that is so that all that blood and all that fishy taste is gonna get pulled out of the body. I'm gonna grab those gills, I'm gonna pull them out just like that, and I'm gonna stick his head in the water so that that, that fresh air doesn't hit that, that blood and make it start to coagulate. So I'm keeping this thing hooked just so I don't drop it and run, let it run away on accident. So again, first step, landed him. Second step is I come down to the water, pull those gills out so that I can get the, all that blood and all that nasty stuff out of the inside of that fish. Sometimes just kind of pulsing that heart a little bit helps. And there we have it. We have our lunch, everyone. So now that this thing's humanely killed, we knocked it out of its misery, we got it bled, we made sure it's not gonna swim away on us. We're gonna take it, we're gonna get this thing gutted, and we're gonna get it ready for the barbecue here together. So what I'm gonna do now, very easy way to do this, grab that fish, crest it right in the middle of your palm of your hand, put that dorsal fin here, that dorsal fin right into the middle of your palm, and you can just hold that fish right there in your palm with each side of your finger so that that thing doesn't slip out and you stab yourself in the hand. Next step, you're gonna take that knife, hopefully it's a sharp one, and you're gonna cut right through that belly all the way up to the base of its gills, just like so, just like that. I'm gonna set my knife down in a safe place, make sure it's not gonna hurt anybody. I'm gonna open that thing up, and I'm just gonna reach right in, right alongside the backbone with, my, with the tips of my fingers, and I'm gonna pull those guts out, just like that. Make sure to pull it all the way up to the gills, and that should come out pretty easily there for you. Next step, I'm gonna get these gills pulled out here, because you don't wanna be eating these gills. A lot of people pull the heads off, I'm gonna leave the head on here just because it's easy and there's no reason not to. It actually helps with some of the flavor. I'm gonna take my fingers, grab each side of those gills, make sure to rip those things all the way out so that you're not getting that stuff on your food. Now, easy part, you wanna see that big lateral vein all the way down its spine there. I'm gonna take my thumb and my thumbnail, I'm gonna push down so I feel myself go through that membrane and I'm gonna use the back of my thumbnail to scrape out all that blood and all the rest of that membrane that's still right there along the spine. So. You can see that stuff floating away. Grab that rest of that membrane there. Keep cleaning it. Make sure both sides are nice and clean here. And there you have it. You wanna get these in, this inside cavity pretty clean because this is what we're actually gonna season here. We're gonna put all our flavors, all our seasoning is inside that body cavity there. So you wanna make sure to just get as much of that blood and that gross membrane out. None of it will really hurt you at all. Might just have a little bit of a fishy taste. So be forewarned. It's not bad, but it doesn't taste the best. So now that I have that part done, I'm gonna take my, my knife here and I'm gonna get some of the slime off of the outside here because I don't wanna take the skin off of this, especially with a fish this size. I wanna be able to savor all that flavor and that, that skin will actually lock in a lot of that flavor when you go to cook this thing. You don't want it just spilling out all over into the pan. So I'm gonna take my knife, very carefully, you can use a pair of scissors, you can use anything here, but I'm gonna get some of these scales off of that fish so that I'm not eating those and they're not getting in the bottom of my pan. So I'm just gonna scratch that back and forth, try to get some of those scales off, 
clean some of that slime off from whatever body of water you've been fishing. Again to the other side. Just nice and gentle, you don't have to do it too hard. It's an easy way to cut yourself if you get too western with it. Get those scales off, you can see them all floating away. Got all that slime off of there. And we're ready to cook, guys. Let's head up to the truck. Let's go bust out the barbecue. And let's show you how to cook this trout. All right, everybody, now we're down to the most fun part of all of going fishing, and that's enjoying your catch. So we're gonna do a quick little recipe here. This is very basic. There's a bazillion ways that you can cook a trout, but this is very simple, and I think a lot of you out there who are just starting to fish will enjoy this recipe a lot. It goes well over a lot of different things. You can have some rice, some stuffing, some vegetables, anything you want with it, but I'm gonna show you a quick recipe and show you how easy it is to take these things home and eat them. So I'm gonna start off with a couple slices of butter. I'm gonna be adding this into the inside of the, of the chest cavity of those fish. So, got those cut. I'm gonna get my onion going here. And I'm gonna cut these pretty, pretty healthy sized slices, because I'm gonna cut these in half and I'm gonna add them inside again, the chest cavity of that fish, as well as to the outside of it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just slice these right in half here. So, what I'm gonna do now, and since I don't have my hands dirty, so I'm gonna start to season my fish. This is a little bit of paprika, some peppers, some onions. It's kind of like a seafood style seasoning that I could like use. A good friend of mine makes it. So I'm gonna go pretty healthy on the seasoning here. There's no reason not to get a good coating all over each side of the fish here. The skin we're gonna be peeling off ultimately, but we want that flavor to soak through while it's cooking on the barbecue there. I'm also gonna open that cavity up and that's where we're gonna add a lot of that seasoning here. Okay, I'm gonna get that chest cavity nice and seasoned up. And that's just with that normal seasoning. That doesn't have any salt in it. So I'm gonna take my, my Johnny's here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more to each side, down and through the chest cavity. And any seasoning will work really good with this. I like garlic, I like butter, I like a little bit of Johnny's, and maybe just a little bit of onion and stuff on there. So if you just have basic seasonings, or if you're out camping and don't really wanna take that much stuff, this works really good. Just your normal salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, whatever you want on it. I'm gonna go some fresh ground pepper on that thing too. Push that over, go on the other side. Then I'm gonna add my onions. First off, I'm gonna throw a couple of slices of butter inside there. I'm just gonna go one right here. And this is gonna make it so that that skin and that that fish doesn't stick too badly to the inside of that tin foil. You want that to have a nice layer of butter or some sort of oil or, or sometimes I'll even use mayonnaise if I really have to so that that fish is nice and cooked and doesn't start burning to the end of that tin foil. So on the inside of that, I'm gonna stuff it just like a turkey. Add those slices right there. So got my aluminum foil here. I went pretty big on this sheet. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna slide this guy over. This is just how I transported him and set him right in the middle there. And I'm gonna make sure to make a little bit of a trough in here so that that thing doesn't actually lose any of that juice or any of that butter that's gonna be going on top of it there. So I'm gonna add these slices right to the top of it. And if you don't like onions, anything, green peppers, um, any sort of asparagus or any sort of vegetable, broccoli, anything you wanna put in there with that will go really, really well and will kind of help accent the flavor of that fish. So I'm gonna make that little trough. I'm gonna fold that part over. I'm gonna roll up my ends here because I wanna be able to check this fish and see if it's getting cooked. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna seal this thing up too tight. I'm gonna roll that up. Again, giving myself a little, little bit of a vent too so that I can check on that thing. And we're ready to cook. Just as simple as that. Went from straight from the lake, straight to the barbecue. Got a nice seasoning on it. Let's get this thing on and get it cooking. So I got my barbecue at a good, nice little medium high. You don't wanna to go too hot on it. Again, it'll start to char that skin. You wanna let it cook through first and then maybe crank it up right at the end there to get a nice crisp to the fish. So let's cover that up and wait. All right, everybody, I'm starting to hear a lot of good sounds in here, a lot of sizzling. I think it's done. We've been at about 20, 25 minutes here and you'll start to see, oh yep, that's your first sign. Just like I said, that skin will start to split. You start to get that head kind of separating. That meat's starting to fall right off of those bones. You can see that butter starting to sizzle right from the inside. And again, what's most important is that that meat isn't sticking to those bones anymore and it looks like it's perfect. So let's take this thing off, set it down, let it cool off. Let's eat. Okay, so these things are really nice to eat. It's, it's really the kind of the perfect portion for one person, um, each one of these. So you see, you know, you get four or five trout throughout the day. You really kind of have just enough to, to feed four or five people, uh, which is really, really nice. This, this is a perfect size fish. So I'm gonna take my, my fork, kind of slide it in that skin there, roll that skin back over the meat, and unveil all that beauty. 
Oh man, look at that. That is some delicious looking meat here. All right, first try. We go a little piece of onion, a little piece of fish right here, and enjoy. Mmm. You can taste those onions, you can taste that butter, all those awesome little seasonings on there, a little hint of garlic. And let me tell you guys, if you want to go out and you want to find a way to enjoy the outdoors, whether it's by yourself, with your family, with your kids, going out and trout fishing and being able to eat your catch afterwards is one of the most fulfilling ways to go out and enjoy Mother Nature. So if you guys like this video today, be sure to go up here and click this link to these other how-to videos. We have a lot of great information for you guys to go out and learn how to fish. If you haven't already, go down here, hit subscribe, turn that bell on, give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it, and comment below and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.